this is the aftermarket report with Vegas and Jim. Today's date, November the 29th, 2018. And I'm going to hand this over to Vegas and let her name off the tickers we're going to do today. Hi, everyone. You had a green day. Well, you know, I have to say the market was a bit interesting in the afternoon. Not as active as we probably would have liked to see, but nevertheless, we were able to have trades and we're going to talk about some of these trades and all the charts on all the potential additional trades that could have continuation. So one of them uh, that we're going to talk about is ASNS. We're going to talk about MTP, Twitter, CFRX, OGIN, and Jim might even throw in a bonus at the end of the session. So stick around and listen to our market report. So first one is ASNS. That is called Arsanis Inc. Now this stock today had a really exciting move. And uh, this ran all, let's see here. I actually thought this was gonna go to at least 450 today, but it didn't. Um, but it had a action today. I didn't see any news. There was no news that triggered this. And I have to say congratulations to everyone who traded this because many people banked on this particular stock. So I'm really pleased for everybody. Um, I did notice on the chart earlier that I did have a nice cup and handle and that we did call a couple of breakouts today. So congratulations to people that were even patient on the stock throughout the day. So I'm going to turn it over to Jim to talk about the stock and what he actually can see on that chart. And do we actually think there'll be a continuation or a squeeze that could happen tomorrow? ASNS. I'm going to first pull up a year's chart on here just to kind of give a side glimpse of what we're looking at. We ran this three days ago. We played this stock on a run. And there's a big gap that needed to be filled. And that gap went from about five bucks all the way up to to around sixteen. So it got way oversold back in this uh, day on six twenty eight two thousand and eighteen. And I'm gonna pull this up to a twenty day chart now. You get a better picture of what we're looking at. And these trend lines that I got on here are from the run that we had a couple days ago. And this thing just took off. It ran all day long, nonstop. And then it pulled back after hours, and then it pulled back yesterday and corrected itself. And then this morning, right out of the gate, we started noticing the green on the tape. That was this morning. It had a gap down from last night, which wasn't too much. It was, you know, 20, 40 cents, maybe, about 40 cents. So it ran up. We had a high today of 434, a little bit higher than that, but I had a resistance at 434. And we wanted to take it to 450. That's where this top was. And then we were wanting to break that top and run it up to about five bucks. But we didn't get that. It pulled back a little bit here after, I mean, right into the close. We touched this linear channel right here at 348, right about that area. And it bounced around. And now after hours, we're up a little bit. We're at 371 after hours. So let's keep this on watch. I'm going to just pull this to a one day, one minute. And show you what kind of run we had here today. See what I'm talking about? That's beautiful. I mean, it ran most of the day and then it pulled back. And there was many a times in here that you could get in and out of this stock. And that's what I liked about. That's what I kind of liked about this play today. So this is ASNS. Let's keep it on watch. The momentum's still there. Always play off the healthy pullbacks. And okay. And the next one I'm talking about about is MTP Mida Tech Pharma and you know this one here swing trade really um, you know this stocks actually pulled back and I actually you know find interesting to see that I can't really understand pull back here because when looking at the stocks really not any much dilution so uh, this is definitely one to uh, probably have some patience with to definitely see this probably moving on more of a swing trade perspective. I think we'll see some day traders stepping in, but there is room. There is also a gap fill here to about 40 cents. Um, so it's probably going to take some patience and a bit of time for the real move, but there is a lot of potential here on this stock. 
And uh, Jim, what do you think about this MTP? This is another colorful little uh, chart that we're messing with right here. I'm going to change this to a year's time frame right here. You can see I've been playing the heck out of this one too. And sometimes I need to clean up these, these trend lines on here. But these old ones up here are from last year. And I've so I've played this a few times. I like MTP. Right now we had a 52 week low. So let me go ahead and post this up. This happened today at 23 cents. I'm calling that support area right at 23. We had a double bottom on that yesterday and today. And then we broke out and we hit the high of around 30 cents. So I'm going to pull up the days. Now you see the moving averages are right up here. We've got the 50, the 100, and the 200. So we sure like to see this go back up to 49 cents. And that there is a pretty good support level, as you see right here from when we dipped down here before previous, back on in July. And then we had a bounce up from there, and it's pulled back ever since. So I think we've hit a bottom here. I'm not solidly for sure, but definitely with a double bottom, it, the odds are in our favor. So let's let me pull this up just to a daily, just kind of five minute chart right here. Five day, five minute. You see the 23. We got different resistances: 27, 29, 32, and then up here around this 35 area is where I want to get to. This is MTP. Keep it on watch. And the next one we're going to talk about is one that Vegas mentioned today in the in chat. It's called. TWTR Twitter. Vegas, yes. you got anything you want to say about that before I <laughs> analyze the chart? Well, you know what? I just wanted to mention that I did notice on Twitter that I was actually watching the stock because I was watching the markets and noticed that a lot of the social media stocks were on a pullback. And I did actually see that Twitter was towards the bottom. And I was saying to Jim, look at this chart. What's on Twitter? He's like, I go, this looks like it's gonna it's an actual good short. And he looked at it and said to me, you know what? I kind of think uh, 3134, if it breaks down, it's probably going to go lower. So I thought, you know what? Let's look at some options. So I waited for the stock to pull back. And then I decided that I would look at the option trade. And I actually looked at the one that would expire tomorrow, November the 30th. And this was actually really, really helpful to people that have small capital, don't have a lot of money, don't really have experience in options. And I explained that if you wanted to buy one contract, which technically gives you 100 shares of Twitter in a contract, so your investment was $32 at the time, um, you could actually hopefully make money if we can get Twitter at a price target of $31. So as the stock pulled back, I suggested the option trade as an idea. And uh, I was able to pick it up at 32 cents, which is technically $32 for one contract. And I was happy to buy 10 of them at the time and um, happy to report that made over 100% on it. I mean, people were selling the option at 68 and I believe a few people sold around um, 70 and 71 cents. So we did make over 100%. Some people made 100%. Some people were happy with 70%. But it was a really quick money maker. So we were able to take advantage of Twitter reversing when it did pull back and actually make money on that option call. So congratulations to the option traders. And this was a big help to people with a small account. I have one person that actually shared that they bought three option calls. So they actually spent um, they spent $96 and they doubled their money 100%. So they were really happy. So that was great. So that was uh, nice to see a cheap option trade work out. And Jim, you tell me about the chart because it was with your help and guidance that we were able to take the option call and actually play it properly. Yeah, Twitter is a great stock. I don't, you know, nobody should bash this baby because I just love it. I love this stock and I also love stock twits. So they're my two favorite go-to places. Now, when Twitter, when Vegas alerted me on Twitter, she said it was pulling back. I said, let me look at it. So I took a look at it. And this knife, and let me pull it up to a 10-day here. I noticed uh, three these three golden, uh, or three black crows. And I alerted, I, when Vegas looked, showed that to me, 
the chart, I said, oh, this is getting ready to buy because you're looking at a double bottom right here around 3012. So I'm going to pull this up to a daily now. You see the double bottom. That was a clear indicator that this thing was going to bounce right from there. And I've watched this stock ever since it, it the IP, IPO came out. So I called the Golden Cross in the room. Well, first I called this dip. And if you got in on the dip, that was just beautiful. And once that 50-day crossed over the 100, I said it was a buy. And then definitely after it crossed the 200, I said it was a strong buy. It was a Golden Cross. So the sucker run up all the way up to two different resistances that I had. I called 3134. And then right after that, I called 3144. I said it's going to go in between that channel. Well, it stopped right at 34. It was just beautiful and pulled back to the 50 SMA. So Twitter was an easy, easy play today. If you know how to play the, the simple moving averages of the 50, the 100, and the 200. And I'm just going to give my hats off to Vegas on her uh, option play and everybody else in the room that followed. the. There was one person even was down on it and was about ready to sell it, take a loss. And I said, just wait. We're hitting, we're at support here. Let it bounce back up. And he messaged me later and he said, thank you. So he got out of it with, with, with a little bit of cash instead of a loss. And this is Twitter. And the next one, Vegas. C okay. So the next one C is, uh, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. CFRX. <laughs> yeah. Contrafact Corporation. So, so Contrafact, sorry. And I really like this company because I love, first of all, the weekly chart that really appeals to me. Um, this actually here is a bullish chart and uh, looks like it's ready for another move. Uh, this would actually be for a swing trade. So, you know, day trading is really not for a lot of people. Um, you have to be available to be, you know, to be around, you've got to be in and out. So if you don't really day trade or you don't have time for day trades, or even if you do, like some people find them too stressful. Uh, CFRX to me is a stress-free swing trade. I have a position here at 240 and I'm looking for around two, 280 to $3 next. Uh, probably could go higher, and I'm going to let Jim talk about that. But I actually really like the setup on this particular stock. So I'm going to let Jim talk about the chart. But uh, what appeals to me as well is that we have really good support here on the weekly. If you were to look at the weekly chart, you will notice that um, this did cross above the I like the fact that it had a higher lower lows previous time so I really like where the stock is going it was also um, the price of the stock if you look at the chart is going higher and higher each day maybe not by a lot but you know what it's going in the right channel and that's what's important so it is on a directional movement. So I'm going to let Jim talk about that one and uh, tell us what you see one for a trade. Yeah, CFRX. I'm seeing a lot of good action on this. I'm seeing a lot of up and down, up and down. Now I'm seeing a, a rising wedge off the 200 SMA. How it just kind of just carries off that 200 SMA right there. This is on a yearly chart. So the wedge is moving up with lower highs and higher highs and that's what we want to see on a wedge and this wedge has been going on for about three three almost four months it has real healthy corrections so if the thing pulls back it's going to pull back to the either one of these three moving averages if not we've extended a high right here which was a resistance today at 242 243 so that was a solid resistance if we could break past that 242 we're going off to new places. We can hit up here. We had a year high of 293. And I'm just I'm just curious right now. I'm going to look at a three-year chart. So three-year chart, we had a high of 535. So keep that in mind. And we've had a rising wedge all year long on this thing. It had a low of around 80 cents. So we bounced up to this 237. It's solid. I'm, I'm not cutting it down one bit. So let's see if we can run this up to that 268 area. And that's where that 200 SMA is. This is, like she said, this is going to be, you know, you could, 
you might be able to get in here and scalp it, but you also want to look at it as a swing trade if you buy on the dip. And that's CFRX. Right now we're at a solid resistance. We want to try to break 242. Okay. And just let people know, like, they have um, something in the pipeline as well. They actually do have um, a drug that's in phase two, the CF301. And they also, they also have about three three or four of them that are in, uh, actually two of them in discovery, and one that's going in preclinical or that's in preclinical trials. So um, definitely, I have an interest also in the company. Um, I like the fact that they're also to biotech. We saw biotechs were actually uh, doing well today in the markets. And this company actually is um, a company that delivers therapeutic proteins and looks at discovering products that can do that uh, to help prevent infections, particularly those that you get in hospital settings because, you know, people get a lot of germs. Um, anyhow, so keep this one on watch and um, looking for a continuation on this particular stock in the coming sessions. Next one. Oh, my. <laughs> my little friend, O-G-E-N. O-G-E-N. Orogenics Inc. Well, all I can say is that this chart started to wake up today, and it's on a very interesting channel here. Now, O-G-E-N, coincidentally, opened up today at 83 cents during the market hours it um held from yesterday's support at 84 and went as high as 103 today and you know even after hours it's kind of hard. but um the thing with ogen as you know a couple months back not too long ago they did a presentation and the stock ran really well and had a nice run and then it kind of pulled back, pulled back, pulled back. I mean, I can't even believe it went to a dollar. And uh, this company, Orogenix, I mean, they actually an article that they wrote in some sort of um, medical journal. And that kind of triggered a little bit of, I guess, interest from the market a couple days ago. But then it didn't really have any follow through. So that's, you know, interesting to see it moving again today. Because, um, you know, this could be something for you guys to watch. And uh, about that, because there um, could be some potential movement here on Ogen. Okay. So here we are on the year's chart, year daily. I just erased all them trend lines on there because I've been playing the heck out of this stock. And I love this stock. I call it when it pulls back and I call it when it bounces. And I mean, I'm strong. I really play this stock real good. So we're sitting here down to low of 80 cents. And that's was a bottom that that we always look at, but we never jumped in it. I wish I would have jumped in it. I want to pull up the 30-day chart, or let's pull up the 20-day. And I've got these trend lines already drawn. You see me erase every one of them trend lines, and I put all these new ones on here. And I didn't even bring it down to this section here to fine tune it. And it looks to me like I fine tune it just perfect. So we've got a pullback. We hit the, the dollar breakout level right here. That's a pivot point in this channel. Supports right around 80 cents. I got three different. We got 86, 93, 94. This $1, we want to take it to 10. Let me fine tune this to 107, 108. And then we could probably run it up here to 114, 115. And if we hit that, we could bring it up to 119, 120. But I'm calling resistance at 115 right now. Anywhere between 80 cents and 115, if it stays in this channel, this is a playable stock. And this is OGEN. It picked up some volume today. It, it ran from the bottom of yesterday of 82 cents up to a dollar. So. It's always a fun one to play. I've been burnt in it, but I've also done very well in it. So this is O-G-E-N. Okay. And it's a low floater, too. Let's yeah, keep that in mind. So. Low floater. A lot of, lot, of, lot of interest in this one. Okay. Well, just keep it on watch. I mean, chase the stock. But Jim did give you guys the uh, supports and the channel. So I think if it stays 
between the uh, least 80 cents, it's holding up support. I think if it goes below that, then it's going to, you know, break down. So, um, you know, there is room potentially up to 115 at this point. So just keep it on watch and uh, just play the, you know, watch the tape, watch the charts um, and, you know, play basically the action. You don't have to listen to, you know, all the chatter that goes there. Just stay focused on the chart and tape. Now, I think... Jim, I thought you said you might have a bonus play. Yeah, my ears are on. <laughs> okay. E-A-R-S. We, ears is, is one that we like also. It also likes to pull back. We like to play the breakouts on it. We had been watching this thing ever since it was down at the yearly bottom of 23 cents. Last time we run this up to $2, Vegas was just a few cents off of this call that she made that day. And ever since then, it's pulled back with a couple breakout bounces. We hit a bottom, so let me pull up the 20-day chart now. You see, I always have three or four different charts that I like to fine-tune. I start off with a year, I go to a 20-day, then I go to a 10-day, and then I go to the daily. And I'll try to fine-tune these candles to, make, to find my supports and my exits. So here we are. We're going to keep ears on watch. We started noticing a little bit of volume here today in the pickup. So we run up here and we hit these moving averages of right around, well, pretty close to 62 cents. Now, this is something that you can play for, for a scalp, or is this something that you might want to even swing? We got a low support right around 60, 58 cents. So I'm going to go ahead and call that 58 cents support. And let's see if we can just. Keep it on watch. Add it to your watch list. I think it can go up to the moving averages of 66. And if we can get to that 66 area, we might be able to carry it up to 87. And usually on 78, 87, but this is one that I like. Ears. Keep it on watch. Same as Ogan, you know. One minute I love him, one minute I can't stand him. <laughs> Gotta love stocks. Yep. Right? Yep. Um... Also, I do want to mention one last one, okay? Um, I know some people are in some TRPX. It's been a little bit of a challenge trading this one here because it's had its run, had its pullback. Um, but they did hire a pharmaceutical executive a couple of days ago. And um, obviously, <clears throat> this person's going to be bring some changes to the company. But also interesting with this actual stock is that they had news after hours okay this is the israeli ticker and basically um they did mention that the uh debt cannot be converted at all till march 1st so if you actually take a look at the news on this particular stock they wanted to clarify the terms of the recently issued convertible debenture. So they did mention um, the details of that and uh, with regards to the conversion price, which was $7, cannot be converted until March 2019. So I think that, um, you know, it may be misunderstood out there that uh, they thought maybe this could be shorted. And uh, I think that's not going to be a smart idea with the news like that. So um, still keep it on watch for those of you that are uh, considering it. And if you're in it, I think we could probably see some uh, movement in this particular stock. So just keep it on watch and uh, see what happens next. We've had seven solid days of sell-off on this thing from the last run it had. We've called this when it was at a pretty low number, and it ran all the way up to 930. And then we had like a U-shape bounce, and it bounced back up, created a little resistance right around 870. And from that 870, we've had seven consecutive days of sell-off. And then day, three days ago, had a real bad hard sell-off from, oh, that upper $6, 689, all the way down to 550, which gave it a pretty good opportunity for a buy and then we had a little bitty uh oh i don't know what you want to call these a little i call them sledgehammers and it didn't look like it was ready to bounce but here we are today with a green doji 
So this is on a daily, and I think it's getting ready to turn around. I'm going to have put a little resistance on this thing right around 678, somewhere in that area. You could probably take it up to about 696, 6, 7 bucks. That's going to be your your strong resistance, and then maybe if it, if it keeps on going, we can bring it to 732. But this is one that you want to keep an eye out on. We've got a green doji right here. This could bounce up a little bit tomorrow and hit this SMA here at 616. So let's somewhere around in that area. Let's go ahead and mark it right about 604. And then we'll take this other resistance and put it at 636. So we have a pullback support at, at 552. And that's where them double candle uh, sticks came from with another strong support at 576 so I, I know i run off a bunch of numbers right there and what i'm saying is we had a good strong pullback for seven days now it's consolidated for three at the low support of 550 i think we can take this up to definitely back up to the 605 area and then carry it on bring it up to the next resistance of 676 and this is trpx Two specials. <laughs> Two specials. Well, I hope everyone enjoyed this episode. Um, there was also the Christmas tree lighting on Wall Street today. Uh, finishes at 6 o'clock tonight. And also to you stock twit followers, um, hope you guys out in L.A. are attending the event in San Francisco on Howard Street, coincidentally. So enjoy your night with the Stock Twits crew. They have great speakers speaking tonight. So if you're out in L.A., you're definitely enjoying that in the San Fran area. So have a great night, everyone. And hope we will talk to you guys on Sunday. Because you guys know we don't do a market report on Fridays. Tomorrow is Friday. We always do one on Sunday to just refresh your mind for the wrap-up from Friday get you ready for the week for Monday. Stick around and you'll hear us talk on Sunday with your market update ideas. All right. This is the aftermarket update with Vegas and Jim, November the 29th, 2018. And we love stocks. We sure do. Have a good night, everyone.